getting ready to uh, do all of the masked um, images on this piece. So um, I traced my circle onto some old file folders uh, to make it a little more sturdy and put some rolls of tape on the back um, to get a nice clean circle. And then I took a yellow Sharpie and traced around the outer edge just so that I don't feel the need to make a really hard mark along this with paint, um, which might cause the paint to um, squirt underneath. So I already have a mark there with Sharpie and that will help me a little bit. And then uh, I flattened this stencil the other day. Um, by spraying it with water and laying it flat. So now it's flatter. It's not completely flat, so I'm going to have to hold this a little bit as I stencil. And I positioned it so that this is the center skull, and it's on my very faint center mark, and it is half an inch from the edge of my circle. And then I did a little measuring here and a little measuring here. Uh, and it's pretty close to half an inch on either side. Just going to do a little shifting. And this also has tape rolls on the back. So that's half an inch. And it's a little bit more than a half an inch. As long as I get it close, it'll be okay. So, all this stuff is in place, and I have a palette with some yellow paint on it and a foam sponge, and the key to doing this is to do it with a dry sponge. So I'm just going around the edge. And um, you'll notice that the end skulls are pretty clean. That's because I use them as uh, registers to um, mark where the next um, rotation needs to line up. So I'm only taking this yellow out as far as my stencil is going to go, which is the second to the last one. This sponge is pretty dry. I'm just patting the color in place. And I can go back later with uh, a small brush and clean up at anything that is uh, not crisp enough. But my test piece that I showed you a few, few days ago um, showed me that I really don't have to I uh, use very much of this paint to get a nice contrast going. scoot this over a little bit so that it doesn't bounce so much. That's better. Okay, now I'm going to do the outer edge. I just want to make sure that all the little teeth get paint in between them. And 
and I want to get enough paint on it so that I can safely paint around the rest of the background without interfering with this stenciled bit. So I'm sort of doing a bigger circle of paint around this. And that way I can paint off into these corners later and not get close to my skulls. Okay, I'm going to shift this again. teeth to make sure that I'm getting a crisp impression without getting too much paint on the canvas which might make it mushy. It might make the, the image transfer kind of mushy. this rest for a minute and then I'm going to use my little end skull right here to line up and do the side and then the same thing on the other side over here. So and I want to let this dry just in case any paint um, squeezed out like you can see right here some of it squeezed underneath. If I push that up against the canvas um, the imperfections will transfer to the canvas. So I always try to let my stencil rest a little bit before I do another impression. Okay, so this has been drying for about 20 minutes or so. And I'm just going to line up, actually I'm going to line up this one. And just kind of eyeballing this for the moment until I can grab my ruler to swing out a little bit more. So I'm just working back and forth to get this lined up. That's good. I think I pretty much have this where it needs to be. It swings a little wide down here, but I think that's all right. So I'm just pressing the tape in place to make sure it stays. Now I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before. Doing the interior circle first and then the faces 
and then the outer edge. And I'm coming up on the edge of her hair right here, so I'm kind of containing my paint a little bit to stay out of her hair. Although if it gets um, onto the edge of the hair a little bit, it doesn't matter. Now I'll do faces. Paying a little more attention this time because I noticed that some of the faces on my first print weren't as crisp as I liked. But I can go back uh, and lay the stencil down a second time and clean up anything I don't really like. check to make sure that there's no white in the areas that are open. And let's see what we've got. Cool. So now I'm just going to repeat uh, what I just did over on the other side after the stencil has a minute to dry. So now I have both sides filled in with skulls and I'm ready to paint the rest of this. But I'm pull this off and see how I do with my circle. Not too bad. I have some little raggedy stuff over here that I can clean up with some pale yellow later on. But that looks pretty good. So now my next step is to fill in all of the empty spaces around her that are still pale yellow uh, with the darker yellow. And then I'll do some more stenciling with some marigold stencils. This is my uh, marigold stencil I cut uh, yesterday. And it's uh, flowers in two different sizes. Um, this one's slightly larger than this one. And I did a couple of tests in either corner of the piece yesterday. So I'm just taking a little bit of the light orange. And I'm not really doing a lot of planning here. I'm just sort of trying to get flowers onto the canvas in between the edge and my skulls. I'm trying not to get too close. because it tends to make the skulls less defined if they have more pattern closer to them. I don't know why that is, but I applied one on the other side that was, I think, a little too close to the skulls, uh, and I wished that it was further out. So, and I'm just trying to work back and forth between the two sizes um, so that if there's any wet paint that seeps onto the back side of the stencil I give it a second to dry and I don't end up transferring it onto the canvas. So kind of a soft um, lost and found look. I'm not going for really uh, well-defined uh, marigolds on this because this is the background and I do want it to sort of fade into the background. 
So, and I'm just kind of working on the top section right now. And I like to hang design elements off the edge when I stencil in the background. It sort of implies that there's something else going on uh, beyond the edge of the canvas. I kind of like that idea. And it's really easy to do with uh, little elements like this. So I'm just going to do this uh, all over the place until I think I've filled enough space. 